How's it go, buddy? Hi. How are you? All right. Well, um, I have asked uh, Winfield to join and uh, sent him the link. <laughs> and you guys can do your thing around the hours here. All right. So, uh, oh, we just lost Lon. We'll come back on, and then we can do uh, we can do some uh, so we can do some prizes to eat some time. Star, you could always wiggle for us again. Okay. Is that is that I don't know if that's wiggling. Does that count as wiggling? I mean, I, I haven't gotten a clear definition of wiggling. I think that's what the community would like to see, at least, <laughs> what you were doing. <laughs> Chaotic yeah. movement. Yeah, that would count, yeah. Um, I think Winfield just said that he's going to have to switch computers to join, so he's going to go back and forth with that crazy link. <laughs> I don't know of a better way to give it to him, though. Um, do you want me to just kind of start going with uh, what we're going to do for the next hour? Yes. Well, uh, we just got Lum, so he can eat some. Oh, salt. great, great. Uh, and then, uh, and then we can jump right in. So let's do some prizes, Lum. What do we want to give away this time? Uh, coin and credit. Okay. The coin goes to Brent Saz. Brent S A S Z. He gets the coin. Yay. And the store credit goes to Beetle Bear. It's not a beetle, it's a bear, it's a beetle bear. All right, congratulations, winners. All right, uh, Violation, what will we be talking about this hour? Player property. Player owned towns, player housing. Uh, primarily focused on uh, player owned towns, but there's a lot that has to do with uh, the housing inside the towns, I think. So, um, yeah, that's that's what uh, this hour is going to be all about. Cool. So, um, I'm actually going to kick off and do my piece while Winfield's joining, and then I'll let him do his piece. So, um, I just kind of wanted to go through a uh, who, where, and why. Um, and I'm actually going to spill the beans on something that a lot of people probably don't know. Um, I never planned on being a town owner. I planned on having my group operate within another town. And when the towns were originally released, there was no way to get PvP towns. So I messaged the devs and said, please, 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 we want PvP towns. And then a couple minutes after that, I bought a town and said, here, a bribe, please, PvP towns. And they said, oh, well, think about it. So I upgraded it to the next level and said, I have good faith, you'll do it. <laughs> so um, Vengeance was actually born out of a desire for me to see uh, the ability to do open PvP inside of a town. And um, I originally was just going to be uh, a guild and, and live somewhere else. Um, and uh, it's really just kind of snowballed down from there. And I think a lot of people have experienced the same thing. Is as you start to explain, uh, people kind of flock to you, right? So as you tell your story of who you are and who's going to be living in the town, more people come on board. So um, after I got the one town, I figured, well, each release will grow into a new town. And by episode three, when I expect to have a great game that has all the features that I'm looking for... <laughs> um, I don't expect you guys to make the whole world in episode one. I was thinking to myself, I'll have three different towns, and I'll be able to do this different like storyline of how we outgrew our original town. Well, then we had other people inside of our guild go, well, I like that story now, and buy towns. So we ended up with three towns right off the get-go when we were planning to launch with zero. So um, that's just kind of a, an interesting backstory to how Vengeance became. And uh, I figured Winfield has... Uh, a phenomenal history with Paxlayer, and that's why I invited him here. So I'll let him introduce who he is and where he came from. Well, well real quick before we do that, I, I just want to oh, say that go for it. story of your escalation I think is part of like why we like you know, we originally thought we were going to sell like 20 player-owned towns, and now we're like nudging 250. So even even with no overland access, we're still selling. Like it just blows me away how the, the positive response. 
that we've had to that, uh, and 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 scares me. With that said, Winfield, scare me some more. Hi everybody, I'm Winfield, and I'm uh, the governor of Paxlair, one of the first player towns uh, in Shroud of the Avatar. I guess the first one. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Portalarium Hutch, who's who's joined us there, and um, some ideas for player town templates. Working with Star on ideas and working with the entire community on player town ideas. Uh, it's been a fantastic adventure. We went from Ultima Online, which if I do it the right way, Ultima Online Pax Lair to now Shroud of the Avatar Pax Lair, and we're going to build a town, a, multiple towns actually, and we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. So I'm happy to be here. Right on. So um, I, I really kind of wanted to give a chance for people to understand your development. Uh, I mentioned it in the last piece when I said thank you, but one of the uh, more unique experiences that I have had is working with Portalarium. When I think back in my life over the different things that I've said, wow, this is a really cool opportunity that I never would have imagined myself getting. It's uh, being able to be part of something like this. So um, I got addicted to Minecraft when it came out. Uh, the reason why I got addicted to it was because it was a sandbox environment that I could build my own stuff in. And I modded my server. I wrote my own plugins, and I got other people's plugins and modified them. And uh, our, a bunch of the people that we had joined our server. We have one of the oldest servers that's been out. When Selective Multi or uh, excuse me, Survivor Multiplayer came online with Minecraft, uh, a week later we opened a server and it's still going. And it's always been something where you can kill people. We had it in a mod that I wrote that when somebody tried to log off, they would actually stay there for a minute. So they couldn't grief log in and log out, right? So we had a competitive Minecraft open world. And I was thinking that that was like the extent of control I could ever have over an environment online. And it's very, very weird to me when you guys release player-owned towns, but I got more excited because this game that I am going to spend so much time in, that I am going to um, invest many hours of my life into, I actually get to own a slice of the land. I actually get to have a little piece of that puzzle that says... I want the touch from this guy on how it's going to look and how it's going to work, you know? And I got to invest into what every player sees when they look at Shroud of the Avatar. Um, I know there have been other games out there that have given you the ability to own large pieces of property before. Um, but this is the first time that I've really been in a uh, game that I'm committing so much time to that I've been able to customize as much as I have, and I've been able to uh, write in my story. So my town is actually, the story of the guild is really being told through quests inside the town, and I designed my town around PvP events and the quests we're going to do. And um, I guess I really want to take this first kind of uh, 10 to 15 minutes here and really kind of share with people how that happened, the way you guys created the, plan, the town submission forum, the way you guys uh, moved over to allowing people to customize their own towns and get their own slices of heaven, if you will, <laughs> um, and and really give people who don't know what it's like to be a town owner a chance to see what it's like to be a town owner. And I wanted to have Winfield do a lot with Paxlayer to do that, but I don't know if he hey, can well, stream it, so I might end up streaming some of it. So, um, Winfield, do you want to talk about how that form got made, how you guys work together, and uh, the the process of um, different pieces and the devs I would love it if you guys kind of go back and forth and just converse about it <laughs> yeah certainly uh, so one little story I was down here in San Antonio and Star and Richard were down here for one of the conventions I think PAX South or something and I asked Star I said what are you going to do with with these hundreds of towns that, that are going to be built in, uh, in Shroud of the Avatar and he, Star gave me this not lawyer me bro kind of uh, eye look. He gave me this deer in the, you know, deer in the headlights look. Going, I'm not really sure. You know, this is something we really have to figure out. So that's where uh, I became a little bit involved 
and involved a lot of people in the community too. If people remember, it's like, what kind of templates do we want? Let's consolidate some ideas. And uh, Portalarium gave me the opportunity to go ahead and and ship those ideas up to them uh, and uh, and work directly with the devs, the webmaster, work with Hutch. And um, the form allows people to pull the information in or allows Portalarium to pull the information in, put it into a database, and they can probably sort and triage through it and see what information's there and assign it out. We saw the form being used up to, if correct me if I'm wrong, up to the end of June time frame where there was a bit of a cutoff saying, we're going to get your stuff in at that end of the time frame. Um, and if I had changed uh, my town to, to non-PVP after that, that'll be changed in future releases. Uh, so they were able to pull the information out of the form. Now the form has to be well designed. It was actually play tested uh, by several people in the community who really hacked it up and said, hey, it would be better if it had done this and, and show this kind of information. And I think overall they came out with a very good submission form for player-owned town owners. Now the people who see that are those people who own towns or purchasing towns but it gives the best information at the uh, macro level of what uh, you expect out of your player on town. Um, and it goes right along lines with the description of information online uh, when you make that purchase. So you kind of know what questions to answer as you, you know, foresee what kind of purchase you're going to make. Star, am I kind of accurate a bit on that so far? Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, Will, when we first put uh, player owned towns uh, online for sale, uh, <clears throat> we were not anticipating the response. And uh, I think your uh, your 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 uh, description of my deer in the headlights response, I think that was kind of like all of us. And I think we're still in that mode, honestly, uh, where we're still stunned by the response and still kind of going, "Wow, this is going to be uh, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff." But at the same time, we're super excited by it and uh, amazed by uh, the work that people are doing. So yeah, we. You know, we worked with you, uh, and you who, and you sort of facilitated all the community discussions for us because we didn't have the bandwidth uh, to sort of get feedback for everyone of like what what kinds of things would go in the forum, and we and we gave the feedback about what realistically we could and couldn't do, uh, help temper expectations about what what kind of input, what kind of selections, what kind of customization each person was going to be able to make, uh, and then. <clears throat> But even with all that form, you know, there's still a lot. I mean, you know, Hutch and I go through every single submission and, and talk about it. So there's still a subjective filter that every one of those things has to go through. It's like, okay, well, uh, the, the most recent one, you know, was like, so right now we only have two base templates and a bunch of variations of them. So we have the original, you know, coastal town template, which is the, quote, PAX layer template, uh, which we have a bunch of biomes for. Um, <clears throat> Uh, even modified to the extent of that snowy mountain one, uh, and then and then we've got the island template. And the the the, the really interesting thing about uh, I think that I was really pleased with the work that uh, Hutch was able to do with the island template was we took we built the island template using two completely different uh, submission requests. You know, one was for the Duchy of Darabray, which was supposed to be this tiny little naturalistic druidic kind of enclave, all sort of spread out in, na in nature. And then, and then the other one was Arch Draconis, which was this like, you know, grid, city grid, fortified island. And we figured out a way to make one reusable template that could facilitate those two completely different uh, layouts. And, that, and, and, that, and that's kind of the direction we're going to be going as we build out further templates is trying to make templates that can facilitate a much wider variety of layouts than they could, which is even more important now that we're supporting uh, this idea of the dynamic towns. Uh, Brian, you had mentioned that you had uh, contributed to that. Do you want to speak to what you contributed to, sir? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember uh, one of the first things that I did when I saw the initial form was message Star and Winfield and say, you're going to need a lot of disclaimers. So that long list of oh crud disclaimers that are at the bottom of that were basically from my contracts guy perspective picking it apart. Yeah, what if they misinterpret this? What if they misinterpret this? What if they think you mean this? So yeah. 
So the cool thing about this is like um, I I don't know of another game that has allowed players to be such uh, an important part, right? Like this whole process, we usually get force fed, we usually get told. So we've got a problem, and we decided this is how we're going to fix it. Enjoy. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it's not just owning the player-owned town that has been something that you get to do, but the whole process of um, the size of the player-owned town, what you're going to get when you buy it, the original. Uh, post that was made suggested that player owned towns were going to be about what 10 times the price and you were going to get lots with it yeah. and the community came back and said we don't like that we want it to be like this so what you get when you buy a player owned town how you submit the player owned town all these different things you guys have let us be part of really what it's become so um with that, uh, I was actually expecting to have a little bit more time uh, spent on introductions. Brian came in late. He missed his. I'd like to let him do it, and then we'll move over to some of the questions. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, Brian here, uh, Wrath Phoenix, Chasm Phoenix, I was uh, introduced before. Um, I am actually the uh, administrator and, and governor of Port Phoenix, which is the capital city of the Phoenix Republic. And... Uh, I think it's safe to say that I, 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 I have a little bit to do with a lot of the player-owned town events and, and various things that are going on, work with people like Winfield and, and other groups to try to figure out role-play and functional scenarios of how these towns can be used outside of just, hey, it's land and a place to live. So it's been really fun actually testing that concept. Uh, we have the Paxlayer meetings that occur. Um, and we often all get together for the Paxlayer meetings because of the fact that Winfield and all the other player-owned town owners are often just there, and they are saying, hey, let's not just talk about Paxlayer, let's talk about what can we do with a player-owned town. And, you know, we talk, recently we started talking about shipping and other things like that. So it's really exciting to be a part of how we work things out, even with the, the bare-bones tools that we have. So it's, it's been a fun discovery process. So with it that, looks like we have to pause. Yeah, we have to pause uh, because thank you, community. You have uh, given us even more money. Uh, so it's time for another shot. Woohoo! Like my Stop. Tito's vodka made here in Texas. Stop. 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 I like the sign now says "Warning G." Warning G. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yay! Okay. And it, can you guys see my camera at all? I don't show up to myself. No, we don't see your camera. They're dark. Let me reconnect. Shot so far. No. What? All right. So um, I'm going to hammer some of these questions out, and there's a couple times we might take pauses here and really go into a couple of different things with the towns and maybe stream some of it. But um, I, I would like to hammer some of these questions out that we've been given, if that's okay. Sure. So, uh, starting off, in future releases, do you think there's going to be more town more towns available for purchase in the next expansions of the map? So, as you create new uh, overland areas, um, not Novia, will you open up overland access to new towns? Yes. That was by uh, Roper Doc Holiday, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Uh, how will you allow people to acquire new towns or upgrade current towns in the future? What about in-game currency and cost systems? That's from Avatar Acid. Uh, yeah, so we want to facilitate uh, in-game purchase of player-owned towns, uh, but uh, that may not be available until uh, at least ones with overland access until episode two, just because of the numbers that we've sold so far and the amount of available landmass. Uh, we'll probably still allow selling of nested ones uh, with in-game gold, uh, but not, uh, again, because of the numbers that we sold already. We probably we don't have room for any more on the oval land for episode one. And directly ties into that. The next question also from Avatar Acid is, you said that player-owned towns will not be available in the offline single-player game. How are you going to address all that blank space? There's a lot of space taken up by the Overland map uh, with these player-owned towns. If you're going to just take them away, what goes there? Uh, well, the, the way we already have the ability to associate uh, an adventure space with multiple hexes, uh, so we'll just enlarge the uh, hexes that are covered by a given particular adventure space. 
And if I can say also, by the way, the, the map of Novia was planned not expecting exactly zero player-owned towns. So the player-owned towns actually have squeezed the free space. It's uh, the, the correct amount of free space was prior to uh, player-owned towns. So um, the next questions here, I'm going to spend a little bit of time to make sure we get the right answers to, I think. But um, it's, it's around... Uh, the dev time to customize towns. So uh, you kind of moved into this dynamic form of town creation, right? And um, your town, as it were, is is described inside of a form that you then submit, and then a dev reads that. What about the player interaction between the developer? Uh Sorry, can you repeat that? I was do a little. Can we still get dev time to customize our towns? Uh, yes, and so uh, we we are definitely going to uh, retain our commitment. Uh, uh, for those of you who do not wish to have a dynamic town and you wish to have a uh, static and customized town, we're still committed to fulfilling that promise. And can we submit our own customizations for towns to the devs? So, like, I have Broken Walls and Vengeance. Will other people be able to do stuff like that, or is it just going to be from your preset assets when we do static towns? Uh, it'll be, you know, it'll, it'll, it's just going to depend on the level of customization requests in each town request. That's how we handle it. Um, you know, uh, in general, if it's, hey, I want this exact template and I have this one minor request, then that's usually what we, that's the bandwidth we have to honor it. You know, it just depends. It's from template to template. So there's no set answer. But, yes, there will be a level of customization on top of the templates that everybody will be entitled to. So you've kind of already answered this one, but um, is the plan to make more static towns or convert towns to static at some point? So that second half hasn't been answered. Uh, yeah, so uh, if, you know, uh, after playing around with the dynamic towns, you know, you're still wanting uh, a static town. We'll, we, again, we still plan, we'll, we'll honor that request for sure. What about the other way around, though? So to be very specific on this one, I have a dynamic town, uh, and I make customizations. At episode one's launch, are you going to force them all to become static? Uh... I don't think I quite understand the question, but, uh, you know, uh, we're not planning on forcing anyone to be either static or dynamic, but it will be a choice every owner will have to make. Okay. So um, I, I, I think that that answered it right there. You don't plan on forcing dynamics to become static. They can stay dynamic forever. Correct. But right okay. now we don't have a way – because because the dynamic towns all use the same base map, we don't have a way to support custom customizations on the static side and dynamic lot placement as well. So you have to you have to basically pick one or the other. But right now, what we've been steadily marching towards on the dynamic side is a lot of the customization requests that have been made. We're trying to make the tool and the assets available to make it so anything you would have asked us to do, you can do on your own. That's our that's our that's our dream. Okay. Well, uh, Richard snuck in. Uh, did you want to say hi to people? You came in a few minutes ago, and I never let you say hi. You're muted, sir. Probably sorry. I had to figure out how to get some windows uncleared so I could unmute. But no, hi everybody. So I was uh, hi to all of you. Joined the the the, uh, uh, the chat. Uh, obviously, I was on earlier too. But uh, great to see all of your well-known faces and to be hanging out with you today. I won't, I'll try not to interrupt much. I just wanted to be present. Yeah, well, we had, right to, had to come on and do a shot. And we can tell that <laughs> Richard is uh, feeling the effects of them because I think he's doing uh, real shots as opposed to uh, my little baby shots. So yeah. He's also at home already. So. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have to worry about driving home. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, we have a surprise guest who's come to the office. Uh, I wasn't going to introduce until we got to do another shot. Oh, uh, okay, okay, he's going to wait. All right, all right, next question. Okay, I'm um, going to try to get through some of these kind of quick here and give time for others. Um, templates, how many templates of each type do we expect to be able to choose from before our towns are set in stone, so no more templates are available? That's a great question. I mean, we certainly plan to have, uh, in general, we're, our goal is to have uh, per biome, uh, at least two choices as a minimum. Okay. 
Um, you don't have a cap of how many you want to make yet? How many yeah. we want to make or how many we can, we can make? Uh, we want to make as many as we can. Yeah. Uh, it it just it'll just come to you know down to funding and resources and things like that. But our our minimum goal is you know two per buy. Two so to... um, that last group of questions were all inspired by Sir Frank. Just as a synopsis there. Uh, any thoughts on allowing player-owned towns to have trainers? That's from Drakus. Uh We had discussed that at one point, and we ultimately decided not to. Um, uh, now that was before we moved to use. Yeah, space, there may be a different. So, yeah, maybe we may, we may uh, consider it now that we're on a use space system and trainers are more than just training. There may be in the future ways that they can help you advance. And uh, I just want to chime in. I got in late on this conversation. Probably not even supposed to be here. Uh, but part of the the reason I think it's important that we'll we'll keep making player owned towns as interesting as possible. Part of the original sales pitch for me, at least. Uh, is, and I think it was uh, Star's idea, so thank slash blame him for the real player own town stuff, but my reason to get behind it was because we have a lot of towns to make, and this is a way we can let players introduce their own towns that will replace a few of the towns we would have had in game otherwise, and it would have been just NPC towns, but let them actually give it their own flavor, uh, because it, I think it's been shown a hundred times over that uh, as creative and you know hardworking as we are, the players are just as creative and hardworking. Uh, and you guys come up with a ton of good ideas. And, so anyway, I uh, I've actually held a different quest every release since Vengeance has gone into the game, and I have a different quest yet again this release. Um, in the last release, I only had one person do the quest, but every other release, I've had over a dozen. So um, violation, if I may offer as well. Back in Ultima Online when we made the original Pax Lair, and uh, if I have it right side up again, there we go. And Richard, you may have this on one of your office's walls from 2007 that I presented right. to you. It took seven years to create this town the way it looks on this map. And so when, Richard, you said, how could we make Pax Lair or any other player town in Novia what do you need to do? And he said, well, we need to be able to not take seven years to create it or we will miss a lot of episodes. So it was a matter of uh, working uh, with developers early on for ideas, but the dynamic lot placement now is fully allowing us to tailor our environment fairly quickly and even organically. We are creating Pax Lair in this case, other towns doing the same thing. We're starting as settlers and we are growing into uh, a metropolis of sorts, even though we're already a metropolis size. Um, in fact, uh, when the opportunity pre uh, presents a cell violation, I have those screenshots of how we have done that, and it, it offers some question about how we're going to do regional shipping, how we're going to have local banks run by players, uh, how we're going to set up NPC buildings and things like that that may spawn some additional questions. Uh, plus, I have a comparison of the, the, the Forest 01 template, which is the Paxler template, in the four different biomes, looking east and looking south. That might be interesting for people to see how the work that the devs do on this to create these templates, they really look different once they're put into the different biome. And then once you start adding buildings, they look very different. So it's a wonderful journey, I would say. So. Whenever you'd like me to show some of that, I can. Minus um, all the questions. Let me get through a couple more, and then we'll do some showing. Um, I want to know when we're going to see mon not if. Notice, notice the wording. When will we see monsters and resources in player-owned towns? Uh, you know, I, we were talking about that uh, actually in the last part of the hangout. Uh, there's well, there's two there's two parts of that, uh, and I'm gonna answer that, and then we have to do another shot. Uh, but what, Joining us for this show. Yeah, uh, we we've 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 talked periodically. Uh, our our first initial designs was no, uh, we're not we weren't going to mix the peanut butter and the chocolate. So place player housing anywhere where there was player housing was not going to contain um, any resources. Uh, it wasn't going to contain resource nodes for gathering. It wasn't going to uh, contain animals. However, uh, we've been discussing a lot recently, softening that some uh, and. Uh, 
one of the things we've talked about with player-owned towns in general is perhaps something along the lines of like uh, the number of resources is proportional per perhaps to how much housing you have in the space. Um, so uh, if the place, you know, to sort of simulate the real world, so the more you settle the space, the less resources are available to you. So you sort of have to decide how you want to balance that out. Um, and as one, as one way to balance that out, uh, because there's also a benefit with the blessings to having a higher population. So you have to kind of decide whether you want to go for uh, resource yield or you want the blessings or some mix of the two. So we're talking about it. We don't have any design. We don't have any plans to, imp to implement yet. But those are the kind of discussions we're having right now. Now, pour your drinks. There, there needs to be a shot. Yes. So uh, we have yet another shot. So this is shot number seven. Uh, so oh thank you, community. God. And we have a guest so, 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 shooter, so, 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 so. Uh, Jack Frost, ladies and gentlemen, who you may have recognized from the uh, Gus Ball tournament earlier. He's going to be joining us with a shot. And I need to apologize if I offended anybody during the broadcast. I, I heard I made stars one. No, nonsense. Just all the talk of balls. All right. <laughs> cheers. 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 Shots. Cheers. Woo. Woohoo. All right. And did you want to speak to monsters as well? Because I think I cut you off before you got to that. Uh, it would be the same kind of idea that the more settled the popul the more settled the population. Now, then there was the other wacky idea we have, which is uh, the deco spawners. So these would be decorative objects that you could place on your property Mommy. that would spawn creatures. Uh, so you could have like the crypt that would spawn skeletons. You could have the spider eggs that would spawn spiders, et cetera. Uh, that's another wacky idea we've been discussing as well. I, I love it. As soon as Richard brought it up as a possibility and you shook your head and said, don't listen to him, it's crazy. Um, uh, I that was, that was awesome. And um, as long Mommy. as you make it to where once it spawns, it's consumed. Yes. Uh, and you have to gather it out of a different place in the world, then you're not messing up the ecosystem at all, right? So uh, I, I love it, and it gives us yet another ability to add a, a cool dynamic to some of our quests. So I can hide uh, a chest in a part of my town that is guarded by uh, a spawner that I go every day, and I put a new spawn down, and I put something in the chest, and then I've created a custom loot reward that you get for killing something, and, and I love that. So, um, I'm kind of a fan and a proponent of doing things kind of both ways. I mean, if, if there's a system where I can create a specific monster or a specific place for my town for a quest, that's great. Although I wouldn't be um, against personally as a town owner the ability to just give myself an option. You know, yes, my town can have resources, but if it has resources, it also has monsters or something like that. Um, I was wondering, Star, if I may uh, follow up a question with something that you were just talking about before we move on. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned, you know, the blessing system, and this is a question that came up in IRC as well. Have you guys given any more thought about what's going to happen with the with the blessing system, what those blessings may look like, anything like that yet? Yeah, so uh, not that we're really super prepared to talk about publicly. However, Richard has been actively working on that design document. Uh, we're going to have a design session on that uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and then, so probably sometime... Uh, about the time this release R22 comes out, uh, we're gonna have we're gonna be we're gonna start talking uh, publicly about the plans for blessings. Okay, and that question actually came from Grimace in the chat. I just wanted to throw that in. And we know that's a big outstanding hole in the design that we haven't communicated to you guys, and it's critical to your decision making about what you want in your town. Uh, that's why we're not locking anyone into their decisions about what their town has in it right now. So. Uh, no one's locked into any of the decisions they've made I'm or any of the submissions they've made in their form. All that's still in flux until we get that finalized and we have more templates in place. So anyone who's worried about, hey, I've submitted my form and now my town's in the game and I'm kind of locked in anything, no one's locked in anything yet because we don't have all the we don't have all the information and we don't have all of the templates in. Uh, so but no one no one's locked in. Anything. Actually, I'm going to do this live because you just stopped talking. Brian, can you head to Port Phoenix? Uh, Vengeance is a static town, and Port Phoenix is a dynamic town, I believe, correct? No, uh, Port Phoenix is not a dynamic town. Oh, you're static too. I don't but have I'm a dynamic to town owner that can access Pax. Uh, you can't stream um, Winfield. Is there a way? Would you mind giving me steward for a couple minutes in your town? Because I can – can I as a steward do anything, or is it just the town owner? Uh, you can do everything, but I'm not logged in. 
Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I wanted to show off for the next couple of things. I wanted to be able to show off some of the dynamic town control. Um, and I had another person slated to be here that would have been able to do that, but they weren't able to make it due to work, unfortunately. Two actually were not able to make it because uh, of work. I can but... uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to my computer and I'll log into hometown. Oh, great. Great. Awesome. Please. Yeah. Um, so one of the next uh, questions here has been a kind of a hot topic, and it's been blowing up on the forums quite a bit. Um, like if all player-owned towns get a crier slash bank hybrid, it's a town crier and a bank, will all player-owned towns and NPC towns get one as well? And uh, yeah, can you speak not just to that question, but also to your design thoughts on making all of the player-owned towns get the hybrid crier bank? Yeah, so everyone needs to have a crier bank, uh, and that's primarily because how things work with if you get evicted, whether it is evicted by the town owner or evicted due to the lack of paying your money, your stuff gets sent to the bank in that town. So we need to have a crier bank in each and every town. So that's one of those that is going to be a freebie for everybody that there will it's guaranteed to be that in there, because if not, then, hey, guess what? You get evicted, you can't ever get to your stuff. Uh, and that's one of those we also uh, will keep an eye out for people doing silly things and exploits, like, hey, we're going to surround the crier by uh, castle wall. Go online, do anybody want to say hi to Tass? Boxes that players can't get to and really evict people. Hey, this is a team member we didn't get, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we have a team member that we didn't get to introduce earlier. Uh, because he's in you Europe. You have to introduce him by his title. Uh, <clears throat> this is Tassilo. Probably can't hear him. Tassilo, uh, the epic mustache guy. Epic mustache guy, exactly. Yeah. So we're, we've are we got two devices talking to each other. Uh, he's in the middle of doing all of the back-end work for uh, the expirations that are happening today. So uh, he's not stressed at all. <clears throat> not at all. He's totally chill. Look how chill he is. Say hi, everybody. Like he's, <laughs> he's not chill at all. He's, he's yeah. chill. No, he's there not chill. There we go. Perfect. All right. Good seeing you guys. We'll keep going to meeting. Have fun with your... Okay. Uh, kind of falling behind where I want to be right now, so I'm going to fire these kind of quick. I'm um, going to read off all of these questions in one line. They all come from the same person. There's a lot of questions, and you can kind of speak to it. It's uh, basically been handled with Dynamic Towns, and you can speak to this while showing the Dynamic Town if you want. Um, how will walls be handled in player-owned towns? How many of us have requested walls, uh, walled towns or fortresses? Will Portalarium offer templates with these walls? Uh, they will, will they be objects that player-owned town owners have to place? Um, will it be possible for a player-owned town owner to add objects to decorate the walls? What about light sources? There is a placeable light source limit by player-owned town size, but a place like Al's Head have torches lighting in every tower. Will these count toward the light limit? That's all from Morian Seeker. I don't even know where to start with those. Uh, it's, all about, like a, it's all about it's all about dynamic like town questions. decoration limits and walls, and answering the question of how you control walls and if it applies to your dynamic town limits. Uh, hold on a second. Um, <laughs> Stars it's gonna be like, hard to do um, while I also demo, uh, so I will pay attention for a second. Uh, so. Um, uh, walls, you know, we're hoping, we had hoped to get walls in, uh, those keep and castle walls in, uh, for R21, didn't quite make it, we're hoping for R22, uh, although we've got a bunch of other stuff we're trying to do, so, uh, if they don't make it in, but we do plan, uh, for those to be placeable, just like the fences, so a kit of wall pieces that you can place together, um, and as far as the light limits are concerned, because every single piece of player property in a town can also have a light in it, that is what that is why the currently the player owned town light limits need to be as small as they are because you've got to take that number and then you've got to add it to every single then add all the number exterior lights that you can have on every single lot together. So don't think of that light limit in your player owned town as the light limit. It's that that's the light limit on top of all the lights that every single piece of property can have as well. So it may seem small until you actually add the, all the numbers that you can have. So what about um, when we do static town? Uh, if we were to not do a dynamic town and we were to have you design a fortress-type town like you've done for 
uh, Arx Draconis, I believe it's called. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how did you handle the lighting on the their walls? Do you have lighting? Uh, if you have lighting, is it bound by the same constraints as a dynamic town, so on and so forth? So. I don't think uh, there's lights on those walls. Are there? Okay. Hutch, I don't remember. I'm check my. I'll be right Are back. Are there lights on those walls? BRB men, keep listening. Thank you. This is an awesome talk show. The walls show. in Arx Draconis don't have any awesome place lights. This is a fucking awesome talk show, you guys. Do they have any built-in lights? No, they don't have any built-in lights. They use the same the same wall uh, pieces that owls had do, and and the, the uh, lights that uh, are are included with the owls head walls are were, were added after the fact. Right. So, but okay. we could we could you know in theory once we come up with the the the, uh, the construction set that Star was was referring to earlier, uh, I imagine that some of those will have pre-placed lights, or we could certainly do that, especially on towers. All right, do you want to bring up and demo some of that system, Star? Yes, uh, I just had to get some markers first, so uh, uh, I, didn't all, I didn't have all that prep, so i got to get my inventory loaded with markers and in, uh, deeds. No worries. I'll so go to the next question then. Yeah. Uh, Rath, you actually asked this, so I'll just paste it in the chat and let you read it, because it'd be weird if I read your question with you right here. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you touched on this earlier, and uh, I've had a lot of talks back and forth with people about this. Uh, the deco limit for dynamic towns. Um, I think we all understand the, the stresses of the, um, of the light limits, especially in, you know, enclosed locations, but you're talking about one square kilometer. Uh, and uh, if you are looking to use dynamic towns uh, in deco in order to do things like give us freedom to build roads or whatever we're going to do. Like, right now, um, I'll give you an example. In Port Phoenix, when we make the jump to dynamic, I think we'll have a deco limit of total 80 items. 80 items to decorate and customize, make unique. Uh, some spot, hopefully, of a one square kilometer area is a very small drop in the bucket. <laughs> um, is there any... Plan or are there any plans to raise that limit? Is that being considered? Or are we just testing? I mean, uh, I was I was a little bit taken aback when I saw the the the, the small limits on uh, player on town dynamic town deco. I think people saw last release the uh, first time dynamic towns were live that some maps were taking insane amounts of time to load. Uh, right. This release that it's much better. I think the actual number. Uh, it may be higher than 80 by the time we get live, but it's uh, we still have plenty of optimization to do, and we're trying to keep it from being too painful right now. As we've seen over and over again, uh, if uh, we have a limit, players will absolutely reach and uh, uh, try to do everything they can to make the craziest thing happen, which, yes, I'm looking at you, Baron Droxus, with uh, Rat's Nest with 540 uh, lots in it. Well, uh, an alternative second part to that question, um, will we be seeing larger pieces of deco that might go in player-owned towns that we can buy, craft, whatever, um, because that would also help. Like, pavers that are, like, the size of a village lot would solve a lot of problems, too. Yeah, well, definitely, and we'll, we'll keep refining that system. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, part of the sales pitch for why to do player-owned towns is because we wanted the, the players to make the spaces, and we want them to make it as interesting as possible. So going along with that, we will continue to raise those limits as optimization show we can. Uh, we're just trying not to let people destroy the experience too much for themselves. So uh, it'll probably rise. Right now, I just can't uh, commit to what that number will be eventually. Fair enough. Don't lawyer me, bro. But we're, we'll definitely, if it if we have things up so uh, load times are are great, no one's suffering too much, then definitely we'll increase that number. And I think you can expect to see bigger decoration type stuff coming in the uh, not too terribly. Yeah, and, and again, just a reminder that the you know how we develop is always iterative. Don't lawyer me, And so me, bro. every every. You know, every, everything we do, the first goal is to get a functional system with a minimal data set in it, right? And so we just launched the ability to place decorative items in a player-owned town. And so, and we, and, and we built the absolute minimum amount of data and objects to, do, to, to 
function, make the system function. And then over time, as we do with all of our systems, we'll expand the functionality, we'll expand the amount of content available. And, you know, and, and, and as we do optimizations, we'll expand those numbers as well. So no one should take every, anything in the game as final. So uh, I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, people can see it. Can people see my screen? Yes? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. I, can, uh, I can see your screen. You're a little okay. bit dark, but you know that's soda. Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, I can fix that. So. Star likes it dark. You can blame all can, dark. Can you fix it for the rest of us who are trapped in the dark? There we go. That should be better. All right. So uh, here I, I am. Uh, command. Uh, this is dynamic player-owned town. So everything you see in this space, uh, uh, I put in. So I put in the lot. So the way you you have these things called lot markers. Uh, and so you drag it out of your inventory, and then just like the housing decoration system, you can decide where it goes. Uh, right now, I'm kind of in this central area, so there isn't a lot of free space, but I could, if I wanted, put that, put in a lot right here in the middle. Uh, and now once I've placed that lot, uh, it is now a lot like any lot you would see in a town, so I can claim it using a deed. So. Uh, like there, I can claim this current lot. Uh, once it's claimed, uh, I can now put a, a building on it. So I can put this tower right in the middle of this square. And now, uh, and then, so players have this ability to basically place anything they want. Uh, and if I want, if I want, I can just, uh, on this one, I can evict the resident, which is myself. So I evicted myself, and now that lot's free again. Yeah and I can pick it up and drag it and put it somewhere else. Uh, I can also take, uh, in addition to placing lots and then claiming those with deeds, there's this whole class of objects that we, call, <coughs> that we allow placeable anywhere in the town. So things like trees and pavers and things like that, and even whole buildings like that guard tower. You can see that uh, I can just pick up and move and rotate uh, somewhere else or, or not. It's a little tricky over. Oh, there it is. I can change the orientation slightly if I want. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of power uh, in the hands of town owners of what they can place in these spaces. Is that kind of, I mean, I know that was quick and dirty, but. Is that kind of what you were? That's exactly what I was looking to do with Paxlayer, yeah. yeah. Um, unfortunately, Winfield's on a spot right now where he can't stream the game very well. Yeah. Um, so he wasn't able to do it, unfortunately, sure. and William wasn't able to make it. So, uh, anywho, uh, I've got one more up in kind of this design section. Is uh, Will we be able to buy and place more NPC buildings and NPCs through other means other than upgrading our town level? Uh, oh, actually... Hey, that was Casey. That was your question. I didn't realize that. <laughs> oh, so this is that sort of ad hoc. Back to wow, that guy was reading my mind. Uh, so this was the sort of uh, ad hoc placement and uh, ad hoc upgrades, you know, add-ons basically to your town. Uh, for episode one, we don't plan on that. We plan to link it still to the size of the town. Um, now, that with that said, you know, we don't do soul binding of anything. So anything is tradable, it's just limited by the size of your town. So uh, if you wanted to, say, make, you know, if you all of a sudden wanted more guard towers and guard NPCs, you wouldn't necessarily have to do that through your submission form. You could just trade those items with other players. Yeah, but that doesn't resolve the, the limitation on number, uh, the, the max limit of NPCs and, and NPC buildings, which is where that question was originating. Right, but the valuation of the player-owned town is based on those limits. So if we let you ad hoc increase those, that would change the valuation of the town. So right now we plan on, that's a hard lock between the valuation of the town size and those limits. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so um, what do shrines do? Exactly, the shrine statues. How many will will there be? Like, how many different shrine statues? And uh, if this is undecided, when will we know? That's from Drakus. Uh Yeah, I think we kind of touched on this earlier. You know, we uh, we just uh, now started working on the detailed design for that, uh, and we're gonna be able. We're planning on releasing information about that uh, about the time that Artsway Two goes live. 
And I think I leaked a little bit on uh, blessings from the Oracle in the Space post that I made. Mm. Uh, and then I mentioned that one of the blessings, that one of the things that's going to the Oracle is you'll be able to get a uh, buff that will prevent uh, decay and help with skill decay so that you don't have to worry about skill, or skill decay. And really, I just wanted to jump in because uh, Hutch has expressed his concern for Kazan's fire alarm. <laughs> your uh, your smoke alarm has been going deep every time you've been on there, and we, we want you to get those batteries fixed, okay? <laughs> right. Um, will players be able to change NPC buildings on a whim, or would these have a cooldown or some sort of a locked status? Uh, in dynamic towns, we don't. We don't. We weren't planning on having any kind of cooldown. So if you wanted to change your, I mean, just like we don't have any cooldown associated with reassigning lots or anything like that. Like we, uh, the the only complication might be merchants and vendors with stock uh, if they have player items. But uh, right now we're actually that wouldn't matter because we're keeping the NPCs separate from the buildings. So uh, we probably have, not. If we need to, because people are doing wacky stuff, I mean, we've talked about some of the things players can do, like, hey, I'm going to place these uh, buildings down on top of players who are in the game right now uh, to try and capture them under a building, that type of crazy stuff. If we do get to that point where we find that people are doing that, uh, then we've got some options in terms of, like, fading the building in over a period of 10 minutes or something. Uh, but again, our, our town owners are generally pretty responsible. Uh, so we're kind of in a wait and see. We don't want to do any more work than we have to on this stuff. Okay, uh, this is about sieging. Um, can our player on towns be sieged when they are not flagged for PvP? So you guys have talked a bit about how towns can be sieged. Uh, right now, uh, we've actually talked uh, about maybe that's a flag the owner can set says basically I'm willing for uh, town sieges. So for those of you who don't know, uh, a town siege is not necessarily PvP. It's a it's it's a PvP type event uh, that may have some PvP components to it. But any town in the game, any NPC town, can be laid under siege by uh, bad guys. We haven't given a lot of detail out about this. Uh, and so one of the things we've talked about is uh, giving player owned town owners the ability to say, "Hey, I'm willing to participate in that system." And um, this is kind of a, one of those system ones here that uh, I, I think you guys have probably thought about, but I've never heard talked about. If a player on town that is accessible only through another player on town, so in other words, one that does not have overland max access, okay. Um, so the, the one that does have overland access, if you get banned from it, um, then what happens, and uh, slash zone is going to be removed, so on and so forth. Um, I think I know the answer to it with single player, but if you guys could address that. Uh, so what we've talked about is having some sort of dialogue that maybe comes up when you go that lets you choose which of the nested towns you want to go to, so you can bypass the parent, go directly to the child. Uh, alternatively, if you get banned from the town, we just let you go into the town, but only in single player, so you, you're always in the single player version of the town. We'll see which one works out better. That's the easier version of it. It's just ban getting banned from a town means that you only see yourself in the town and nobody else. All right, uh, we've got four minutes left, and I have, like, eight more things. So you guys have uh, 25 seconds a pop. <laughs> if I have a tax-free lot deed and choose to live in a player-owned town, will the owner of the player-owned town be able to charge me taxes? No, not involuntarily. He can always blackmail you and threaten you and say, if you don't pay taxes to him, that he will evict you from the town. But, but there's no systemic reason. support for that currently. That's from Ember, uh, and direct follow-up is for the security of residents and player-owned town owners. Will there be some sort of a rent lease function added for lots and housing? That's from Blake Blackstone. Uh, that's been requested. Uh, we've talked about it. It's definitely on the backlog. Uh, hopefully, we're not sure it'll make episode one, but we definitely want to facilitate stuff like that. And also, I just want to point out that whenever uh, we say not going to make episode one, that may make episode 1.1 1 .1 or something like that. That does not necessarily mean it's a two years away or a year away or anything. Yeah, because just because we are we are absolutely committed to monthly releases forever. 
And will the point of the zone be changeable in dynamic player-owned towns? That's from Striker Sparhawk. Will the what? I'm sorry. Uh, where you zone in. So like okay. Vengeance, you're at the north road. If I wanted people to zone into the south road, can I do that if it's a dynamic town? Uh, yeah, that's something we've talked about that we want to facilitate, yeah. Will a dynamic player on town owner be allowed to designate where the onk placement is? Or is the option for the cemetery to take over, uh, for example, Striker Sparhawk again? Uh, that's an interesting one. Uh, that Especially the PvP town could lead to some uh, some serious griefing uh, because you could basically put the onk in a completely inaccessible area, but maybe that's the kind of gameplay you want. So I, I don't know. That's not something we've considered. I'll tell you what I would like to see uh, personally as a, as a request before I get into this list of feature requests here is you guys create a couple of static onks, and then you also let us place dynamic onks. So we can add X number of onks, like uh, depending on the size of your scene, the smaller towns get one, the larger towns get two, three, four, so on and so forth. So if I have an arena that I want people to be able to PvP in all the time, I can place an onk right next to it to make reses a lot easier. Um, but depending on my town size is how many onks I would get. Oh, that's interesting because that's that would be similar to how we're doing banks now since now every, every town is going to come with a, the town acquirer slash banker combined function but you can add an additional bank if you want people to access it in a more central application. So that, that, that's, a, that's a, I like that. So 90 seconds here. I'm just going to read these in a row. New feature requests. View and edit my own town permissions remotely. That's Kazen. Permissions to add an entire guild instead of just a player uh, in the permission system for towns. That's Kazen. Allowable home type filtering. In other words, I don't want to see any windmills, so I can check a box and say that's no longer allowed. That's from Drakus. Uh, decorations, a chaos shrine. Come on, Star, just commit. Yeah. <laughs> and a ring of stones. Those are both from Thurisaz Thir Shiol. Uh, and diversification of NPC crafting buildings and stations. That's from KVAL. So in other words, uh, some of the stuff isn't available and some of the stuff is replicated. So there's two of certain types of stations, but not some of others. For example, produ uh, production is represented, but uh, the ability to smelt or something isn't represented in an NPC building. So if I want to put up a building with a blacksmith and next door to that have another one with a uh, smelting station, so on and so forth. Um, and I think we're out of time. That took a lot longer to get through the questions than I had hoped, but uh, there you go. I made it inside the hour. So, so to, I'll answer a couple of those because we're, we're out of time. But uh, uh, the Chaos Shrine is definitely part of the design. Richard's been working on that. And again, we'll give more information about that uh, right around the time release 22 goes live. Uh, and uh, I know Hutch really loves the idea of letting a player own town owner decide. Uh, housing type restrictions. So uh, if, if, if that happens, you, everyone can thank Hutch because he's going to pressure it. Because now, now that that seed has been... Hey, thank you, Hutch. He's not going to let it go. He's going to lobby for it at every single needs meeting where we debate these kinds of things. And I just want to share one uh, tidbit here since we're already past our time now anyways and into the next sec or segment and I'll take away from you. When uh, maybe you release uh, two or three or four somewhere in there where Al's head uh, went live and we had the houses in there. We were first allowing people to claim houses. Hutch went through and you can set a default house that will spawn on each lot. And Hutch went through and set them all so the town was beautiful and perfect. <laughs> and every house looked like a nice little farm village. And he, I think he was so proud of it. And then the players got into it. I tore all that down and put up the uh, various night houses. Yeah, the, yeah. the tallest building you <laughs> yeah. put in. They were all windmills or the uh, benefactor night homes, yeah. all of them. He was pretty much in tears for several releases after that, so he yeah. misses the days of being able to control that. Stuff. We we still hear about that. Yeah, my, my beautiful little pastoral farmland, and then uh, you know the city up above is yeah laid waste. Like, this street is always in the shade now. There's never any yeah, sun on here. Yeah, it's like New York City. <laughs> All right, well thanks for hosting. Violations yeah. did a great job. Thanks guys. All right. All right, now we're gonna. Uh, uh, let's see. So first, we're gonna give uh, we're gonna give away some prizes. Uh, let's see what we've got. We've got uh, another coin and some credit. So master of ceremonies, Lum. Well, we have game design going on behind me. Uh, but 
Sorry about that. No, it's all right. Well, what? We, are we, we, are, we are actually working on a game here. Uh, what do you uh, want to give away, Star? We're giving away a coin and a credit. Okay, so the coin is SB, S-B-E-E. -E. Proud winner of a challenge coin. And the winner of the $10 store credit is Underlord. And winner of the crankiest person in the office that is chasing his office mates away is me. <laughs> Don't you always win that award on a daily basis? On a very regular basis. <laughs> All right, so uh, right now uh, we had planned to uh, do a Sojourner Tales play session. Uh, however, uh, there was this pesky work thing that happened, and so we didn't actually have time to learn the rules. So instead, uh, we are still going to do a board game session. Uh, so uh, Joaquin and Ken and Rick are going to play, what are we playing? Coup. Hmm? We're playing Coup. We have Justin. Oh, is Justin playing as well? All right. All right. And Wacky, where are you, man? Who? Okay. So uh, I'm going to leave it to you, gentlemen. Do you want me to turn this around, or do you want to, uh, you want to come? Well, they know to keep their ears open. Uh, no, we're still, we're still a little bit. And I think that'll be fine there, maybe all the way back, and then we'll okay. just gather on that. So it has to be hooked to this thing, though, because the Wi-Fi's not working. But you can unplug power. I'm sorry. I will let you go. Oh, it's got plenty of beats. Uh-huh. It does. Go ahead. I guess so you want me here? here. Oh, sure. Is that good? I don't know. We'll figure out a spot for it. Okay, there you go. we got to try and get five or six people around. Have fun. I'll be back. We'll be back to drink in a few minutes. Star, I miss when your face used to be on that character board. Okay. Yeah, if you had me, if you were looking at that. That were in some way. Where is it? Probably over there. Oh, I think got some wet spots over here. Yeah, that looks a little nice. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Let's try that. Get as many game developers in as you can. Let me check this chair back yeah. inside. And Chris Spears is going to sing and play with us? Sure. Yay! <laughs> Well, welcome everybody. We're going to take a little break for the day and play a game here. Again, sorry we didn't, uh, we weren't able to really prepare properly for Sojourner Tales. And are the is the roll of paper towels and the two beers kind of an essential part of the setup? Well, I'm going to try and get it right in the middle so that you can't see some of it. Nah, maybe we'll move it. I guess. <laughs> Good direction, Richard. Boom, done. Well, I played Sojourner Tales. Played it uh, last year. Did you? I still, I mean, it sounds like fun to run, but it also sounds like. Well, it's time to concentrate on it. This release. There's a lot of reading, and there it takes quite a while. I don't oh, like yeah, to read. Take a... Matthew, find a spot on camera, man. You're not allowed to be off camera. Yeah. 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 Is Rick's in there? I guess it's full. We get to play games. All right. Does anybody know how to play this game? Nope. Damn. Barely. Play <laughs> I played it once. Need a reminder. Two. Allow me to read, since we didn't play the reading game today. I'll find some stuff to read anyway. Welcome to Coup. In the not-too-distant future, the government is run for profit by a new royal class of multinational CEOs. Their greed and absolute control of the economy has reduced all but a privileged few to lie in poverty and desperation. Out of, the opposed, mm. out of the oppressed masses rose the resistance, an underground organization focused on overthrowing the powerful rulers. Valiant efforts of the resistance have created discord and truth and weakness in the political courts of the Nouveau Royale, bringing the government to the brink of collapse. But for you, and you, and you, and you, and you, a powerful government official, this is your opportunity to manipulate, bribe, and bluff your way into absolute power. To be successful, you must destroy the influence of the new rivals. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, wait, hold on. What? Press something that's... that's Which we did. Absolutely. I don't know. Same, 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 same,
The players in IRC also want to play. They want their own cards, and they want to hold them up to the screen and just trust yeah, that you get the right ones. Really cool. <laughs> Sadly, there is, there's only a box for six <laughs> players today. And you guys will need to be good and loud to be heard, especially from the far end of the table there, Ricky. So that was all the uh, the fluffy, fun fiction that I read, game mechanic-wise. The goal is to do the influence. More oh, shots! I'm yeah. supposed to do another shot. Hey. Oh, my stomach's beginning to feel a little off. What a surprise. That's right. I'm supposed to do another shot, shot apparently. Thank you. Cheers. Ooh. Cheers. Cheers, Starlog. Dallas just posted, so. You need to fix these things. Uh, clear it on the webpage. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Well done. <laughs> Two cards per player. Yes. Are you, uh, are you, uh, okay. you, you may look at your card. Okay. You want to know what's in the card. This is a game of elimination. We're going to play until there's only one player left. As the rules say, there is no second place. There is only a winner. The person who won the last game starts. Who won Gus Paul today? Any winners at the table? Me. All right, Chris starts. <laughs> you are the big winner. On your turn, Chris, you're going to choose from a number of actions. You get to do one thing. You have two cards in your hand that are going to define some actions that you may or may not take. Let's see your play card. Not only do you get to take those actions, you can take any of them. Let's say you don't have a duke in your hand. You're still allowed to take the duke action. It's up to the rest of us to find out whether or not we are going to possibly call your bluff. We may challenge us. Um, to kind of start from the from the top down, there are two, there are three actions really that you don't have to have cards for. You look at income is the top action. So I'm going to take income and you're going to take coin from the bank. Nobody can do anything about that. You, do that. you can also say I'm going to take foreign aid, which would get you two coins from the bank. You'll notice that the duke has the power of blocking the foreign aid. You may say I'm going to take foreign aid. And you'll say, ah, I've got a duke card. I'm going to block that. Then it's up to you to decide whether or not that player actually has a duke card to do the challenge. I have a duke card. I'm going to take three. All right. There you go. Is there a challenge to that? You'll notice that the third simple action we didn't talk about is to coup. Once you have seven coins in your hand, you can call for a coup against an individual player and they're going to lose one of their cards. That's it. You've got seven coins in your hand. Otherwise, you lose, call, you lose cards if somebody challenges you and you were bluffing. Uh, once you're out of cards, you're out of the game. So I have questions. How many cards, how many of each of these cards are there? Three of each. There are already counting cards. And there's or some that are still left out on the table. That's correct. Yeah. And you'll notice the ambassador power allows you to exchange cards with the cortex, so those those may actually come into play. Well, it didn't look like anybody wished to challenge Chris's ability to tap, so we're on to Justin. I'm going to block that for you if I do. You may not take that, sir. Hey, are there? Three. Three. Well, what happens if we challenge these ones to fail? The challenge is, the first time I just have to accept So when a challenge happens, somebody needs to come to the first challenge. Or Feel free to make deals right? with the players if you'd like somebody to challenge. Okay. My turn? Uh, that same duke that blocked your four and eight, I'm going to use it to take three coins and tax. I got five on my way to a coup. I'll take the income. You can't do anything about that. <laughs> um, I'm going to use my passive to exchange cards and flip them. We all believe Jackson's what means, huh? Yeah, I'm sitting pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Can you use my dupes to take three cards? Oh, there's like six dupes out here. 
a lot of dudes, guys. I'm sure nobody wants to call that blood. All right. All right, I guess Matt's turn is over. Matthew. Matthew with one T. Two T's. How that makes more sense. Because exchange cards give you the same cards you want. So you do like a. Enjoy this. I'll be right back. That's correct, sir. And okay, so that was the ambassador. Since the internet ground, there at that. Internet. Zero internet. challenges thus far. We've been around internet. once. Internet. It's a happy internet. day around here, folks. Internet. Internet. I love the internet. I love the internet. I'm ready to challenge Chris. I love the internet. What do you say? Then I will assassin, uh, assassinate Rick. Okay, so we can assassinate. Either you have her or you don't. Maybe I do. No, I'm looking. I've got a lot of cards here. Right, well, if you have it, you wouldn't be talking. So you don't have it. <laughs> what if I let him assassinate this? He can pick the card now. I'll let you assassinate my master. And then right. that, that will stay up in front of me so that everybody is aware that there is at least one attack for sure. All right, we well, we wanted to challenge that, huh? Okay. Uh, I'm going to be. Sounds like it's done to me. Yeah. It attacks for three points. I love the internet. I love the internet. I love the internet. You should raise this up. So it can be angled down a little bit. So you can't really see. I nominate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to assassinate Matthew. Uh, pardon the jarring interruption. <laughs> no. I was going to lose it anyways. You have to, uh, if you, yeah. You, if you could. No, I I failed. Oh, you failed. Not, yeah, that's 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 If an action is successfully challenged, the entire action fails, and any coin paid at the cost of the action of the turn can. Wow, it actually called out a green. Might have just spent it. I'm going to need to. Uh, I don't know why I did that, so it gets points back. I'd rather have one. Oh, if only he had a contest. Oh, we're going to block your assassination. Oh, that's not that. Good. That's that. So you're going to challenge the counter action. Can I do that? You may. No, oh, oh. you sir lose losing the limits of the court. I get my three back, right? No, no you don't. So do I, how do I do that? The action wasn't. That, that, that oh, challenge yeah. failed. Yeah. How do I get the block? How do you swap it out? You just pick one? Well, so this, this, this goes face up in front of me. So this guy is that. That gets shuffled in. So you call challenge. Yeah, go on. Go on. What, you got it? Oh, yeah, so he bought some. I don't think there that. is that back and forth. I think he just reveals what that's what he bought. Or just says he bought it, right? 
Well, no. yes, but you force them to show it, and whenever anybody's you forced to show their card, they get a new card. Yeah. If you were to just lay back and say, cool, you got a contestant, then he wouldn't have had to work it again. You can just look bluff that he's blocking contestants and make him challenge you. Right. That's why he lost it. So that's you thought I was challenging him to challenge is what I meant. Like, he was challenging him. Oh, so if I had him taking a bluff, that would actually kill one of your characters. Or no, nothing would happen. All right. So, oh, what, what card is what card is that on the table there? Uh, okay. I'm Chris Spears. Come on, man. I'm still a dude. I gotta take three points. Mm. Followed by an assassination. That's the following for that. That's the same. Monday is such a good day to do shots. Jesus. Wait, what's that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Now, if, if, you have an, if you have an ambassador or a captain in your hand, or if you just want us to think you have an ambassador or a captain, you'll see in the counteraction, those two allow two, so which of those two want to go back? I'm sorry, I that away. Uh, I'm going to take three with the tax. One, two, three. Look at that dragon walk for fly for all of those who are watching on the stream. Pay no attention to you gamers. I kept thinking about letting everybody watch my database work with it. Is it still on all this? No, it's still on. 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 I'm also. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still alive, man. All right, well, I'm going to keep you saying that. Tell me there's a lot of dupes out there, guys. I'm going to make two dupes in their hands. All right, well, let's that, see right? if uh, there really is uh, a lot of dupes out there. Uh, I'm going to uh, assassinate the. Uh, yeah, and I think it's got to be Rick. I, ch I can challenge your ability to assassinate me, sir. Okay. Oh, are you saying you don't think I have an assassin? I'm saying I know you don't have an assassin. Challenge. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Figure it out. So, is there any reason not to challenge? No. At that point, I get my money back. No, you don't. Because you start the attaching action, the action goes though. through. But you do get to shuffle and take a new card now that you've shown so that you have. Really, reckon that negative one card. <laughs> so if yeah. you're at one, there's never a reason not to challenge. Right, exactly. Which, which eliminates uh, an interesting uh, situation, which is to have two cards and being somebody trying to assassinate you, possibly you could go from making a challenge and lose. What would one card I have nothing to do? And I believe yeah. when I'm out, the knees go back into the middle. So I might the guy that killed you? No. There's one. At least yeah. nobody can steal from me anymore, you sons of <laughs> public channel. Have we started swearing on the channel yet? Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh... My turn? Yeah. All right, well, we both have one. They all have two. We should stand together. You're going to steal two points over here. <laughs> <laughs> nice plan. Matthew was trying to get in front of that. Hello, friend. No. Pitch. You're hiding behind your text. Thanks, Kevin. Russell Brand. I agree. He looks like Russell Brand. Joaquin. You're trying to give you a turn. We just take each other out. <laughs> By the way, the Contessa box assassination. Mm -hmm. So the one that he had that I got shuffled back into the one that he revealed before. Mm -hmm. well, remember, remember, you can lose both of your cards. But he said you <laughs> lose the same card again. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
on one rule that I don't think is measured by waste, it's 22. Ten or more coins, you must execute to get them. Not that anybody's at 10 yet, but if anybody's getting there, like 42. I mean, I would break my ribs if I tried to do it any small. I'm going to use my captain, my captain to steal two from Joaquin. Uh, <laughs> okay. I've been paying attention. Chris has a captain, a duke, an assassin, an assassin, or maybe I was not playing the captain. I might not have been using that. Uh oh. Would you have that over here? No, just my waist. My waist is twenty two. Um, I have to break a rib to get any smaller than that. The room may seem like it's sinking a little bit, but I think that's just Finn's placement of the lean for the camera. Oh, poor There's another assassin. There's nothing to steal now. I saved my own life. No, I guess it's over to me now. Nope. No, I'm going to take it. I'm going to be a dude. Keep running away with it, guys. <laughs> You and we invited Chris to invite the right type of player for this one. Oh, now that hooker is great to hang out. Let's walk in. The Sibulin says nothing, by the way. For those following along at home, we're down to three players. Chris, Ken, and Joaquin. Chris is, still has two influence over the court, while Ken and Joaquin only hold one card apiece. I was the first one, um, then Matthew, and now sadly Justin has been on the hmm. sad day. Uh, so that, that's Ken's turn. I will block it with my. <laughs> <laughs> Did you reach all the captains? <laughs> one in four chance. There's a one in four chance. I don't know. I'll block with my ambassador. I'll, I'll block with my captain. <laughs> I think he has it, but I'm going to tell him to go. Oh. Nope. Then again. Oh. Oh. All right, Joaquin. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm in a bad spot here. <laughs> Uh, I got a new so. microphone. Let me put it over here so you can hear me better. Do you hear me better now? Do you hear me? Do you hear me better? Or too much? Like better or too much? <laughs> I can't tell. Mm 
way you can do that. Let's see, three, take two, oh no, you can't take two, but if you want to do a two, you have to do two, so that would leave me with five. Get back around to you, put it down until we get five, and then I'll have to. <laughs> <laughs> I do can get three. Sports always uh, concede a practice game. Oh, hey, deja vu. Let me check real quick. I appreciate that. Who goes first? The person who won the last game yeah. starts. Uh, I respect that. I 
Oh, okay. And he said the word. Oh. Okay. You lost your dude. First, I thought. This one is early round, so easy to stay up at. Yeah, yeah. expect people not to tell them. Yeah. 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 I'm going to take some income. Stand for that, Chris? If you had said Duke, I would have challenged you. If Duke P says it, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use my capital to steal two. I'm going to you can do that. Mm -hmm. you have one. Feel free to challenge his ambassador. That means you can exchange cards with Cliff. So who are you doing? Okay. That's, that's what I'm doing. Or he'll just keep it for stealing his cards already. This is a steal that we drew. Yeah, that doesn't fit there. All right, I've got three. I'm going to uh, assassinate uh, Jesse. I'm going to go ahead and challenge Nothing's happened to make him switch that out, right? <laughs> so. 
Now that action still went two then, right? Um, you, got, you got two out of my file. Yeah. I can shuffle it and take the cards if I need to show up. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I forgot that I'm not supposed to show up. You let me know that one's over. 
I saw the bottom of the card. All right, cool. I have to on this one. <laughs> oh, did you go 300 from a shot? What? I think we're 300 from a shot. I already killed off two beers. <laughs> I still have to drive home. <laughs> I did the math on mine. I know my. I drink four ounces of beer. You current rate we're at, I'm okay. <laughs> okay for what? Have you, have you okay to get home. As long I'm going as they... to exchange the board deck. It's my understanding okay. that you'll almost need the screen into the mic because nobody can hear you. Uh, are we pretty? Are we pretty soft? Yes, very okay. soft. That's yeah, I'll concur with that too. I'm trying to listen in on you guys. You have mumble and or soft. The only thing that people need to know is that I won the first game. <laughs> and I've lost both games so far, but I think there's an asterisk on both of these so far. So I'm feeling pretty good. There's no ego at that table at all. Wait, so what I the challenge. It's like I'm sorry. I still do this. I was still sad, though. I was still sad, though. It's your turn, though. Pretty much. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> and it's Kim's turn. Uh, 15 minutes. We're getting faster. Let's go. All right. All right. Okay, Ken, awesome. will be, Ken will be the first. Okay, so we need to talk louder so we can hear. Gotcha. Right? Yes. yes. Ken is 1 1. I have 1 1. Who will win the first game? Here we go. Card. Thank you. Thank you. I got two. Most certainly will not be me. Uh, you've refined your bluffing now, I think. We all change seats so we don't all have to come right after the same guy every time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to assassinate you first. All right, man, there's 15 cards there. How long does it take? Assassinate cards. <laughs> and now Joaquin's going to assassinate me. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, I don't like your shirt. All right, now Justin's going to assassinate me. You won the last game, so you're going to go first. I thought we were going to go first. 